Gabriella, it is so great to see you. You've kind of become like a favorite here with our local audiences, and we're really looking forward to working with you again. I think a lot of your fans here would like to know about your early background. Sure. So first of all, hi, Peter. I'm so happy to be coming back to Stockton. I absolutely love being there. I have made friends in the community. I love the orchestra and working with you and at the theater. And I'm so excited to be back. Yeah. Uh, but sure, let me tell you a little bit about my musical upbringing. So I am actually a fifth generation female pianist. So wow. I like to joke that I am kind of the black sheep of the family because my Mom is an architect and has a master's in music. My grandma had a PhD in philosophy and a master's in music, and I only studied music. Oh, so that's <laughs> what makes you the black sheep. Just, yeah. Black sheep, only music. I grew up in Venezuela, and I took lessons with my mom, and I moved to the States when I was 11 and moved to New Jersey to go to the Juilliard Pre-College. Uh -huh. um, and I was there, I stayed there for undergraduate and master's. It's been a wonderful, a wonderful ride. That's fantastic. And let's go back to the description of all those generations of pianists. And so would it be accurate to say that in the womb, you were already hearing your mom play the piano sometimes? You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because I really think that in the womb, you can hear and kind of internalize some things. So my mom always told me that when I was, oh gosh, I was very little, I must've been four, something was playing in the radio. I think it was Mozart 21st concerto. And all of a sudden she says, I just started singing along and she was just shocked. And she had been performing that when she was pregnant with me. I she said, see. oh my gosh, that's amazing. So I, I always thought, oh, what a cute story. And then that actually happened to me. I have a daughter who's seven now, but when she was two, we um, were driving to the pool for swim lessons and I'm listening to Emperor Concerto because I was performing it the next week or something like that. And all of a sudden from her little car seat in the back seat, she starts singing along and I just thought, <gasps> oh my wow. goodness. And, and it was super special because I, that was actually the last piece I performed. I was 32 weeks pregnant. So she was basically like at the touching the keyboard when I was performing this. And it was one of the last pieces I performed uh, with orchestra four times. So she, I think you can hear her stuff from in there. Now talking about your daughter, I think the very first time you came out to Stockton here, you didn't yet have that daughter. That's right. I actually think the first time I came out was like a week after my wedding or something like that. I remember, wow. yeah. I think we were on our way to the honeymoon and I played a concert on my way. <laughs> and every time you visit, you're treated to the kind hospitality of Phil and Ann Beraldsheimer. Yes. So the Beraldsheimers are dear friends. I love staying with them. They're, they're so wonderful. And I'm, I'm so excited to see them again. What I wanted to ask you going back to your early years. Sure. Did you start playing when you were four? Kind of a funny story. I've always wanted to play piano. And like I said, my mom is a pianist. She dedicated her life to teaching. She put me in violin lessons. That is not what I wanted to play. So I would just cry because it was not piano. <laughs> <laughs> I, so she, you know, she, she just said, maybe when you're older, we'll do something. She just kind of was trying to push it to later. And one day her last student went home for the day and she's uh, cooking in the kitchen. She's making dinner. And all of a sudden she hears, fa mi fa de si fa, Beethoven piano concerto. Uh -huh. And she's confused because she could have sworn her student left and she closed the door. And my mom runs downstairs and it's me sitting on the piano, finding the notes by ear, playing the Beethoven wow. piano concerto. I said, well, you're not teaching me, so I'm going to learn it by myself. She said, okay. <laughs> and how, were, how old were you when you said that? Uh, I, was, I was five. So she said, all right, I will teach you how to play, but you have to learn how to read music. You have to do scales. You have to do all of the things that, you know, that all of my students do. And I said, great. And I want to play the Beethoven second piano concerto. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, okay, if you learn how to read, you can play anything that you want. And I played it a year later because I was so determined oh. to play that piece. And I have a little video of me performing <laughs> Beethoven's second piano After concerto. After one year. After one year, because I really wanted to do it. So fast forwarding to now, <laughs> next week when you're going to come visit us, uh, you're playing the Rachmaninoff Second Piano Concerto, which we've never done together before, but I'm sure you've played this piece many times all around the world. 
You know, I I feel like I always say, oh, whatever piece I'm playing this week is my favorite, but this one really is. Yeah. <laughs> the Rachmaninoff Second Piano Concerto is such an iconic piece. It's the type of piece that anyone who's watching this and thinks, oh, well, I don't know if I if I know that one, you know it. You've heard it in movies. You've heard it everywhere, and it's it's truly one of the most beautiful pieces of music ever written. Every melody is so special and moving. And I feel like the storyline, you know, between the orchestra and the piano, it's just so beautifully written and organic that every note is so special and wonderful. So I'm really excited to be playing it next week. Well, you mentioned the melodic lines and Rachmaninoff is really a master of the the big tune, you know, which comes back, right. especially at the very end. But in addition right. to that, even in today's generation, it sends pianists to the limits of, of virtuosity. It is. It's very virtuosic, but also because he was a pianist, it's written so beautifully. It's never, there are never any spots um, that are too hard. Like you, it just works in the hand, which is nice. But I do have to say, compared to his other concertos and even the Rhapsody, I think this one is the most comfortable to perform for the hand, at least. I, I, uh, I think you're being modest. I think that any of the Rachmaninoff piano concertos are, you know, always taxing for anybody and they always require okay. a bit of practicing. And that brings up something I, I want to get into, which I've never talked about with any other soloist. But when we talked uh -oh. on the phone recently, you talked about this. So you opened up the door. Oh, no. <laughs> I want to talk about the concept of positive procrastination. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. Because um, you, so you told me that for you, it's kind of almost like a haven that if, if you, if you should be attending to, to utility bills or, or doing something else, you know, you, you're going to put that aside and say, I, I think I'm going to go practice. Okay. So I think you called me on a good day of procrastinating. I believe um, I was taking time away from having to do laundry and unpack suitcases. And I said, I I'm going to practice a lot today. And that, that can wait. But one of my favorite forms of procrastinating is organizing and tidying things and sorting things. This might be a pandemic phenomenon when we were trying to gain control by no, organizing think, our homes. I, I think it's universal. <laughs> I mean, I love it. it when, when, so I was in, when I was in college, if I had a really important paper or exam coming up, I, my positive procrastination would be I'd clean up my room. Uh-huh. Well, that's a good thing also to do. So yeah. <laughs> I think I've always loved piano. I've always loved practicing. I love always have loved performing. But it wasn't until the pandemic that I really appreciated live music in a new way. So I just feel so grateful every single day to be able to practice and make music and have an audience and make live music even now that I, you know, it's, I, I'm just very, very grateful even for the practicing. <laughs> we are super looking forward to working with you next week. We're so glad you're returning here and it's just always incredible to work with you. Uh, thank you so much, Peter. I am so happy to be coming and I hope to see you all at our concerts Saturday and Sunday. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.